Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Reed and this is the first video in a series where we're going to talk about AV blocks and as the title suggests, we're going to start off with the first degree AV blocks. And let's just review a little bit about what an AV block is. An AV block, right, it's A stands for atria and V stands for ventricles. And so we know that an AV block means that there are is a difficulty in the signal going from the atria to the ventricles. And so, as you can imagine, our atria is represented by P waves and our ventricular depolarization is represented by QRS complexes. And so when we're evaluating for an AV block, we're trying to determine what is the relationship between P waves and QRS complexes. And so let's talk a little bit about the anatomy and the physiology of uh, conduction as it goes from the atria to the ventricle. So we know that there is this cardiac skeleton that lies in between the atria and the ventricles. And so that means that when the sinus node fires off and depolarizes the atria, it can't just go into the ventricles. It has to get there via this junction, this AV node and the AV node passes that signal down. And so the anatomy of the AV node is interesting. We know the function of it. The function of the AV node is to delay the signal, to delay signal from the atria to the ventricles by 120 to 200 milliseconds, right? And that's why our PR interval is roughly 120 to 200 milliseconds when it's normal. So an AV block means that we're not going to see normal PR interval that is between 120 and 200 milliseconds. And so when we talk about the anatomy of this AV junction, there's a couple of structures that are really, really important. Okay, First is this kind of structure here, and that's our AV node proper. So that's the AV node that captures the signal, and the AV node is what delays the signal. And then just beneath the AV node is this bundle called the bundle of Hiss. Right, so our, this is the Hiss bundle. And these two structures are what are passing along the signal. Now, it's really important to note that the AV node is the part of this conduction pathway in the AV junction collectively, this is the AV junction. And the AV node is what slows the signal down. The AV node also exhibits something called decremental conduction. And decremental conduction means that it's an interesting thing that the AV node does. It's a protective mechanism. And what it means is that when the rate increases, meaning that when the rate of stimulation, right, when the SA node, whenever the AV node gets stimulated more, it actually will decrease the speed of conduction, right? So this is why when we get really fast, rapid activation of the AV node, we don't send all of those signals just rapidly down to the ventricles. It slows it down. And so it's interesting that the more you get like a tachycardia, the slower the AV node will actually conduct that signal. Now the Hiss bundle doesn't do that. The Hiss bundle actually has something called all or nothing conduction. So that means it doesn't matter how fast you stimulate the Hiss bundle, it is going to conduct or it's not going to conduct, right? Meaning it's going to conduct it rapidly like it normally does, or it's not going to conduct it at all. And that's actually going to help a lot when we talk about these AV node blocks. And so let's go back to our first degree AV block, right? A first degree AV block what a first degree AV block is, is the AV node is just a little bit slower than usual, okay? And so what that means 
is that instead of it being between 120 to 200 milliseconds, my PR interval, which represents my AV node conduction, this means that my PR interval will be greater than 200 milliseconds. However, every P will conduct to a QRS. So we will have one to one conduction, meaning that the AV node functions every single time. It just functions slower. And so remember that our AV node proper is the portion of this junction that actually, if it becomes diseased, we can start seeing evidence of that decremental conduction earlier at normal rates, right? Because normally the sinus node is firing off at a rate of what? 60 to 100 beats per minute. And usually at that rate, we see the AV node function at 120 to 200 milliseconds. But in this case, the AV node proper is a little bit diseased, right? It's a little bit diseased right here within the AV node. And so at a rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute, we're seeing early signs of decremental conduction so that the PR interval increases to greater than 200 milliseconds. Okay, so let's take a look at an example, actually a couple examples of a first degree AV block. So here we have a regular rhythm. You notice if we maybe look at lead two, we've got a regular narrow complex QRS, okay, we've got P waves before my QRS complexes, and if I measure my PR interval here, from the beginning of my QRS complex, I'll zoom in on this one, from the beginning of my QRS complex, in the beginning of that P wave, you can see that the total length from beginning of P to the beginning of the QRS, which is my PR interval, is about six little boxes or six millimeters, which means that six times 40 milliseconds, which is the total duration of a little box, is 240 milliseconds. So my PR interval in this ECG is 240 milliseconds, and that's longer than what we said that it should be. So we know that there is some type of AV block here, but we needed to make sure, before we call it a first degree AV block, that every single P wave conducts to every single QRS. And so you wanna make sure that there's not any P waves in between these beats that are not conducting, and I don't see any, right? I see this nice flat ST and T wave, and then I see a P wave that conducts to a QRS again with a prolonged PR interval that stays the same. The same thing occurs here with a prolonged PR and a prolonged PR. And you can scan through other leads like V1 and you can see the same thing with that prolonged PR interval. And every single P conducts to a QRS. And based on our anatomy beforehand, we know that the AV node itself is where we can see the slowing of that conduction. So the AV node itself, not the His bundle, is delaying that signal for too long. So we're seeing evidence of that decremental behavior, decremental conduction earlier in terms of rate than we should, right? Usually that only occurs when we go to really fast rates, but we're seeing it at normal rates here. Let's look at another example. Here we have somebody who's actually had a inferior myocardial infarction. You can, you can see here we've actually got evidence of some ST changes. Just for all of you who are curious, <clears throat> we've got an inferior STEMI. But let's, let's take a look and see what else we have. We have a narrow complex QRS that's regular. You can see it's regular throughout the entirety of the rhythm. You can see we have P waves in front of my QRS complexes. But if you look at the PR interval here, from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS, we would say that that's about five, eight to nine millimeters, we'll say. We'll call this nine millimeters, that PR interval, which means that my PR interval is nine times 40, so 360 milliseconds. And so that's greater than the maximum limit of normal, which is 
200 milliseconds. So we have an AV block of some sort, meaning that the AV node is taking slower time. And so we look to make sure that every single P wave conducts to a QRS and that there are no other P waves that do not have QRSs. And we don't see that here, right? And so we see that this is every P to every QRS. It's just taking a little bit longer. And so this is a first degree AV block. Last one we'll look at. We see here we've got a narrow complex rhythm that is regular and beating all through the strip. We don't have any drop beats. We've got P waves here that you can see, but those P waves are very far away from those QRS complexes. And if you measure that PR interval, you can see that PR interval is maybe, I don't know, 11 millimeters. So that PR interval is what, 11 times 40, 440 milliseconds, which is very long. We see that every P has a QRS. And so this is a good example of a very prolonged first degree AV block. So this concept of anatomy where the AV node itself has decremental conduction and this Hiss bundle has all or nothing conduction is going to be really important. So remember the Hiss bundle doesn't slow down the signal when it gets diseased. So the block in a first degree block is at the AV node proper. So remember the AV junction, the AV junction contains two structures. One, the AV node, and two, the Hiss bundle. And this is really important because a first degree block means that the AV node is slower than usual, but it works every time. And so that is where we get disease for our first degree AV block. If you want access to these ECGs, I don't know if I told you this before, but we've got them linked down in the description below as PDF files so you can follow along um, or just keep them for yourself. Um, and so, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, ask questions in the comments. I um, hope you enjoy this content. If you do, subscribe to the channel and look out in the next week. We'll be posting the rest of the AV block series. So, yeah, take care, and we'll see you on the next ECG. Have a great day.